I dreamed it. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the regular meeting of Abingdon's Historic Preservation Review Board. This is a citizen board appointed by the town council to interpret and uphold Abingdon's Historic Preservation Ordinance, which is Article 8 of the Zoning Ordinance. Abingdon's Preservation Ordinance protects the historic district and all of its contributing pieces, both buildings and their sites, from negative encroachment resulting from, in from inappropriate construction or design, alterations or demolitions. Our review process is guided by our guidelines, which used the United States Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation as the genesis for their development. It's our intention that our review process provides a positive bridge of support between our ordinance and property owners seeking to make changes while we work together through the natural partnership that exists between us for mutual good. The result will be to ensure Abingdon's historic district continues as a valuable asset and one that makes Abingdon a good place to live, to work, and to visit. Roll call. Mr. Boyd? Here. Mr. Anderson? Here. Mrs. Hartsorn? Absent. Mrs. White? Here. And Mrs. Bond? Here. All right. Uh, our first order of business is approval of minutes from the March 1st meeting. Has everybody had time to review those? Do I have a motion to uh, approve those, or is, are there questions about them? I move that we approve the minutes. Of Peyton Boyd moves to approve. I'll second. And Dwayne Anderson to second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed. Our first um, a certificate of appropriateness application is from um, Bessette Ayab. Uh, when, we, when we have our presentations, the, the uh, applicant will come forward as he is doing and speak his name and address, and we will listen to him. And then anyone else who wants to speak after that will be called upon to come forward to say their name and address and speak. Thank you. Oh, first we have a staff report. Oh, sorry. Staff report. Wait one second. So, Abdel Basset Ayeb uh, has requested approval of certificate of appropriateness for two windows to be installed into the south and east facing elevations of the rear addition. The property is located at 134 Wall Street and it's in subdistrict 3 of the OH. Uh, some background. According to aerials from 1948 and 1957, staff can confirm the rear addition is not part of the 1922 structure built by I.B. Wells. Uh, the 1922 structure was used as a barbershop and billiard parlor. The rear addition is roughly no more than six years old. And as you can see here, here's the 1957 aerial. Here's where the applicant structure is right here. And there is no addition. And you also have that photo in your packet there. So if I zoom in a little bit more here, you can see where the applicant's building is right here. And there is no addition as of then. So it's roughly no more than 60 years old, that part of the building anyway. Um, access to the site will continue to be Wall Street. Uh, some staff findings, the applicant is proposing to install one two foot by six inch, uh, I'm sorry, two foot six inch by four foot six inch double hung sash vinyl window centered on the south elevation of the rear addition facing Rimsburg Drive, so right here. And a second two foot uh, six inch by five foot double hung sash vinyl window centered on the east elevation of the rear addition facing Piggly Wiggly Alley. That will be approximately, we can go right here, and we'll only go down that path. Pretty much right here where you see my clicker just centered on that wall. Uh, both double hung sash vinyl windows will have simulated lights and be pre finished white. Uh, staff can confirm based on aerial photographs, as I mentioned, the rear addition of the structure is no more than 60 years old, and it's not part of the original. Uh, no alterations are proposed to be made to the 1922 section of the structure. And in your packet as well, I have a picture of the window that is uh, proposed. Is there any other further questions for me? I can answer them. If not, the applicant is here to right, answer them. Mr. Bassett? Well, my name is Bassett, and you know the address. Uh, so I guess 
Yes. And the kitchen, do you want me to tell you why I'm asking for these two windows? Are you just to make your presentation however oh. you'd like to, yes. To let us know what you would like to do. Well, yes. And, and, and the, the kitchen is, 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 is so, so hot in the summertime. That's about four months. And uh, the previous uh, summers, it was, it was very, very miserable. And there's no air conditioner whatsoever can fight that heat with two ovens and a lot of equipment. So I wanted to uh, put two windows on both sides so it might, you know, let that heat come out and it will help minimize or lower down that, that temperature. It's not going to take it away, but right. lower it a little bit. Okay. Thank you. So it really doesn't matter along that wall before the, the wooden section. It could be on the, on the far right, could be in the middle. You just want one on Remsburg yes. Drive and one on the back. Yes, and, and I prefer their high, of course, because you know it would be within pretty much reach. Okay. The pedestrian, pedestrian. And from the inside, the higher you go, the better it is because the heat tends to rise. Right. Those kitchens get hot, don't they? Huh? The kitchens get hot. <laughs> Visit me. Right. All right. In the summertime, it's very, very bad. Do we have any public comments? I don't think for that one, no. Okay. I don't think for that one, no. Okay. Have about any discussion? No. Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? The applicant wants to put two windows, one on Remsburg Drive and one on the back facing Piggly Wiggly Alley in the addition to the building. So we need a motion. I move we approve it. Peyton Boyd moves we approve the application as presented for two windows. Moved a second. Boyd, Brooke, 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 excuse me, Brooke Bond seconded the motion. There you go. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mrs. Bunn? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Not the, not the other right now. Not right now. Not right well, now. Not right now. When we have public comment. Like at the end of the session. Yes. Mm. I gotta go back to work. Thank All right. The, se the second application is from the Nature Conservancy. I think we have Nick Proctor here and Matt Bundy. Okay. So the request, the Nature Conservancy applicant slash owner and John Michael Davis representative uh, has requested approval of a uh, certificate of appropriateness for the installation of six inch K style guttering for the four inch by three inch down uh, with four inch by three inch downspouts pre finished black to match the standing seam roof of the open air rear shed roof structure. The property is located at 146 East Main Street and is within subdistrict one of the OH. All right. Okay. Um, staff findings. Uh, obviously, you've seen this before in the past with the shed roof structure, so they're just going to put guttering on there. Uh, it's going to be six inch K style guttering with four inch by three inch downspouts, pre finished black to match the standing seam roof that was put on that uh, at, that you approved at your last meeting. Uh, the guttering would be 11 feet long and the downspout would be eight feet or less. As observed on, on March, on, I'm sorry, April 2022, the attached open air rear shed roof structure did not have any guttering or downspouts attached. At the April 2022 HBRV meeting, the open air shed roof structure was approved to have all wooden remaining re uh, architectural features painted white. And the existing main structure has K style guttering with rectangular downspouts pre finished white. So there's a little difference between the main structure's color guttering, they're all white, pre-finished. They're proposing for the shed roof to have black pre-finished gutters. So. Okay. I guess the um, only revision would be that it would make sense, I didn't realize that it was pre-finished black in the application, that it would probably make sense that the will of the board would be white to match the existing structure, because all, all, everything on the house is style white and then that would be a deviation from the precedent so that would just be one modification that we would be happy to do.
So are you referring to the gutters? The gutter on just the new awning section. Okay. So we're not doing anything with the primary structure. Everything with the house is staying as it is. Right. We would just be adding the tenth or whatever that section is just to the new piece that we've been working on as part of the renovation. The, the, the um, shed roof that is coming off the main house that you're talking about. Correct. You're not talking about this freestanding back garage area now. No, right. not the garage. Okay, just, just the one you've been working on. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I was confused by that. Yeah. Okay. And so you want to change the gutters to white? In the application to white, uh, right now it reflects pre-finished black, which doesn't make sense that they would be black instead of white just to match everything. Okay. So, um, but yeah, right now the awning, the new awning structure does not have anything on it. And so, kind of, <laughs> the last time we were here, we were just like, well, dang, we should have just folded <laughs> it in. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. just to add that okay. on there to close out the project, yeah. Okay. Any public comment? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. Okay. So. Right, any questions? So the application is to approve K-style white gutters for the new shed roof coming off the main. Six thing. inch white. Six inch white. Four by three downspout mm -hmm. to match everything. Okay. Okay. All right. No discussion. Do we have a motion? I move to approve. Brooke Bond, a move to approve the application as presented. I'll second that. Dwayne Anderson second, seconds the motion. Roll call. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mrs. Bond? Aye. Thank you, Nick. So the next application is for a sign on Court Street. The, ap the applicant is Allison Bundy, who's being represented by Matt Bundy. Okay, staff findings. Uh, as, uh, so for the request, Allison Bundy, applicant slash owner, has requested approval of a sticker to appropriateness. For a sign, the proposed signage will be a wall sign hung from an existing metal scroll bracket, pre-finished black, located on the Court Street uh, side. The signage will be fabricated out of CNC carved high-density urethane, or HDU. Uh, the property is located on 190 East Main Street, and the and the property is located in Subdistrict 1 of the OH. All right. Um, background, currently there are two small signs attached in a similar way to 190 East Main Street. One is located on the East Main Street elevation for Foresta. The other is located on the South Court Street elevation for Abingdon Redevelopment and Housing Authority. The existing bracket where the proposed wall sign will be hung is found further down the hill on the South Court Street elevation. Some staff findings. The applicant is proposing to place a wall sign hung from an existing metal scroll bracket prefinished black located on the Court Street side. The signage will be fabricated out of CNC carved high density urethane, HDU. The background of the sign will be white with black used for lettering and design elements. The proposed wall sign will measure 16.94 inches by 34 inches, giving you pretty much a four square foot sign. Okay. Mr. Bundy. We are just replacing the sign that was there for um, Willow Tree Yoga, um, so it's going to be for Abingdon Yoga Center, is the verbiage on it. So it looks like it's in the very same place, same and it, place. it is basically the same size. It's, it's, just, it's the appropriate uh, square footage for signage in the historic district. Any motion. questions, anybody? Discussion? <coughs> All right, there being no discussion, do we have a motion? I'll put that in motion. Dwayne Anderson made the motion to approve the application as presented. Second. Peyton Boyd seconded the motion. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mrs. Bond? Aye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Diane Passon? Okay, so uh, Diane Pasek, 
Applicant slash owner has requested approval of a certificate of appropriateness to replace windows on the west and south facing elevations. The certificate of appropriateness is in response to a stop work order issued on February 7th, 2023 by town staff due to the replacement of windows seen from a public right of way without an approved certificate of appropriateness. Additionally, the applicant is requesting approval to repair the northwest corner of the brick retaining wall located at the front of the property. The property is located on 106 West Valley Street and is in Subdistrict 2 of the OH. All right. Uh, background. The existing windows were wooden prior to replacement. All other windows associated with the structure prior to replacement are either vinyl or could be wood clad with vinyl. According to Places in Time, Volume 2 by Nancy C. King, the structure was built in 1895 by Captain Benjamin P. Morrison. During the 1880s, as a coach and wagon maker, Morrison operated the Vaughn and Morrison Wagon Shop, then located at the back of the lot. Uh, staff findings. As you go through, I have some pictures for you to look at there, too. Uh, staff issued a stop work order on February 7, 2023 due to the following violation concerning the replacement of wooden windows on the west and south facing elevations without an approved certificate of appropriateness. Uh, the applicant is proposing to keep the three sets of windows as installed. Upon visiting the site uh, to issue the stop work order and regular site visit on March 13, uh, 2023, staff concluded the window openings had not changed. The only change observed from the replacement of the windows is the material. The material change consists of the existing windows being of wood, of wood construction and then replaced with windows constructed of metal and vinyl. Aside from the three sets of windows replaced, all the remaining windows appear to be vinyl or wood clad with vinyl and have been part of the structure for a significant amount of time. As you can see here, I kind of laid out in one of your st in the staff report here, just laying out what parts are metal. So the surround is usually metal with the divide and then the other, pretty much the frame of the window itself is vinyl. And uh, then moving on to the retaining wall, uh, the applicant is also requesting approval to repair the brick retaining wall running along the, their western property line. The repairs needed will utilize like-for-like -like materials. Upon visiting the site on March 13, 2023, staff observed the existing retaining wall is constructed using modern bricks and utilizes a Portland cement-based mortar. If you have any questions for me, I can answer them. If not... Applicant is here to answer any questions you may have. All right. Okay. When we replaced the windows, I had read the uh, der, um, uh, guidelines, and it said something about if it can be viewed from the street, and you really can't see it from the street. So I should have come. I did not because I thought it was acceptable since because it's at the side and it's covered by flowers and bushes and things like that. It did not change the size. It really didn't change the look. The only thing is, uh, we know the curtains don't blow inside <laughs> anymore, and you can lock the windows and you can put them up and down without a whole lot of struggle. So that's what happened with the wooden, uh, with the um, um, windows, and the retaining wall is falling down. It's it's probably good for a couple more years, so I would like to get it taken care of now before it really actually falls apart. And um, would like to do it in a kind of a stone look thing. In the backyard, there's a um, next door neighbor has a wall like this that curves around and run, and this would discontinue it instead of being brick. I've got a picture of where it meets. And um, just be a continuation here it is and we'll just continue the um, stone type stuff up to the front and this is what's falling down this is the foundation is yes, what's falling on it and I didn't know it because it's always covered by um, bushes and flowers So we have not been given a, um, a, a plan for the replacement of the wall yet, I don't think. This is the first time we've seen. It was just going to be a like for like material. It's just going to be oh, exactly, yeah. except yeah. it will be a different material. It won't be brick. It will be the, um, that, that
that's so done. Here's the wall right here. Yeah. Did, did you have an example of the stone that you wanted to handle? I don't have the uh, actual stone. I have a picture from the. Um, if you um, want to hand that to them, I, I think mm. if you want to hand that down, that's what they're asking for. And that would, like I say, continue uh, the one that's in the back from next door. What color stone might you be going with? It, or what it will be um, prob almost like the, whatever comes closest to matching what's already there next door. So you take this one. So do I understand that you're not trying to match what's there now? What's there now is brick. Yes. Yeah. And we're, we don't want to change it to uh, the stone. Because they run together. The stone and the brick actually run together in the back. Is this the stone that you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, I see. And it, it curves around. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's in the back okay. and the brick okay. starts. You see that? This is the stone. Mm -hmm. and, that, the yeah, and you're going to try to match that, that stone, yeah, I see. Pretty much, yeah. And that starts where on the property? That, like, okay. the stone? Um, it is, okay, it's to the left of there. Mm -hmm. And, well, you see the, the wall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that. The, uh, the wall curves around and, and then it meets and the brick. meets to the brick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, the reason we're asking these questions that the, you know, the, the, the guidelines really ask that things be repaired rather than replaced if mm -hmm. possible. And so it's it, been there a long time. <laughs> the brick. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I asked about the guy who was doing it. He said it would be better just to replace it. I would be happy if it could be repaired, but. Um, and you are going to try to get the replacement to be re really work well with the yeah. with the wall mm -hmm. that's there. Any comments? No. It's a, it seems like it's Portland cement, so it's kind of up to the board to their discretion if they would want to keep the brick wall there, depending on when it was built in, since it right. is existing, or if you would would mind the change to the stone. Comments? Well, I don't have any problem changing it to the stone. Let's see if we can have a motion then. It's going to be, it's going to look patched mm -hmm. because you can't match it, you can't match the old patina mm -hmm. or the moss. Right. So. The difference will probably be more startling. Mm -hmm. So, do we have a motion? Oh, for some. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Present that motion. Okay. For Brooke Bunn um, will move to approve the application as presented to change the repair to the stone to, to carefully match the stone beside it. Yeah. Okay. I second that. Peyton Boyd seconds. Any further discussion? Okay. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mrs. Bunn? Aye. Okay, so now the windows. Oh, we got a window. <laughs> the hard one. <laughs> That's already, I mean, they're done. <laughs> the, some people, well, Gabe showed up with somebody else when, after the windows had been removed. and. Um, so, so the windows, just to clarify, the two windows that you did replace are facing west on the side and facing south to face Plum Alley. No, they don't. They don't. Face, no, they're, they're on the west side entirely. It's a little addition that was added on sometime. Uh, it's not part of the original house. So it's not those two windows he's highlighting there? No. Oh, yeah, they are in there. <laughs> yeah. 
So those do have uh, phase four mailing, yeah. But you say it's that addition that was made. It was not a part of the original not house. Not part of the original. So, and the, um, so it's just to clarify for everybody, it's these, this pair right here, and then let me. The other two pair are on the side. Move over there. Yeah. This, the other one and the other one's right here. That okay. you could see further down the street, but this right. is the other pair. Okay. Um, and and also the the other windows in the structure are mostly vinyl or or metal clad wood metal clad. Yeah. Oh, there have been two other additions, and they're vinyl. Yeah. It looks like the windows have gone through multiple iterations. So most of the remaining ones are vinyl or wood clad with vinyl in some way. So. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Do we have a motion? Just a quick question. So this existing, the windows before replacement, this sort of pixelated view here, um, those, those existing windows had, um, the upper sash had uh, mutton. Mm -hmm. Section division. Right? Yeah, I don't know why it came out blurry on this. It was good on the report on digitally. But yeah, so the top pane had three lights, and then the bottom was just one pane. Probably. And That's all the, the originally. The other windows, the other windows have the divided no. upper sash. No, the other ones there, the three that were replaced, they all had that same design, but then the remaining ones that were not changed, that have been there. It seems like those were changed sometime way in the past. So. And they don't have the. And they don't have the. Yeah. Okay. So I move we approve it. Or did we already do that? No, we didn't. <laughs> so Peyton moves that we approve the application to uh, replace the two windows as they are replaced now. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Dwayne Anderson seconds the motion. Okay, do we have any further discussion anywhere? Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. And Mrs. Bunn? Aye. Thank you. All right. Next application is Mary Sorensen. Okay. Let me just get situated here and we'll have all this up here. Mary Sorensen, applicant slash owner, has requested approval of a certificate appropriateness for exterior changes and landscaping. The property is located on 117 West Main Street and is in subdistrict 1 of the OH. Uh, some background the one and a half story Craftsman style structure dates back to the early 1930s and is a contributing structure. The garage located at the rear of the property is non contributing. Access to the site will continue to be West Main Street and Plum Alley to staff findings. So as we did at the last meeting, I kind of broke it up into front courtyard, backyard, the main house. So we'll go through that same process okay. here. And let me zoom in to the front courtyard portion of the plan. This way you can see it up here as well. That That's not the one you sent around. I sent out the uh, additional, uh, could we look the new at that one. one. I sent out a new one this uh, morning. Yeah, could we look at that? Yeah, this is it right here. Uh, this is it, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. So for the front courtyard, the applicant proposes a ceramic bird bath located in the southeast corner green space of the property along with a decorative rock formation close by. Within the front courtyard running along the concrete retaining wall are agave sculptures and garden beds. The existing brick walkways will be torn out and replaced with earthen toned concrete pavers set in a herringbone pattern. So as you can see here, just to, re just to recoup some of that is here's the bird bath, the ceramic bird bath, the rock formation, and various plants you'll see throughout. This is the type of stone you'll see 
uh, in the herringbone pattern here in the middle of the courtyard or the central portion of it. Uh, the bricks from their existing walkways uh, will be relayed in a herringbone pattern as a perimeter around the central located, centrally located earth and tone concrete pavers. So as you can see here, it's going to make up a perimeter around what's going to be the earth and tone pavers now. Uh, within, within the front courtyard, benches repurposed from a trolley will be evenly spaced throughout. Uh, the benches have a metal frame with wooden slats. The repurposed trolley benches will have a white painted metal frame and a clear sealant applied to the wooden slats. Here's a picture of, a slight picture of the uh, uh, benches here. And I also included that in your packet there too, so you can see more of an up close one in the trolleys. Um, let's see. Uh, in the southwest corner of the property will be a 10-foot metal flagpole with associated gardens nearby. Um, in addition to the proposed flagpole, a garden space, the applicant wishes to have uh, two repurposed trolley benches here as well, as you can see here. Uh, the existing unfinished wooden uh, picketed fence will be painted uh, Sherwin-Williams natural white, so this part right here. If you have any questions for the front yard, I can answer them now, or if not, we can move to the backyard, if you prefer. I have one question. Okay, it, might, it might be that we take it, take it in sections like this, maybe. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. We'll stick with the front yard first, then. Yeah, we'll have comments and questions. Um, okay. I have a concern about the number of things going on here. We talked about that at the last meeting, I think. And in, in particularly the number of paving or surfacing materials. Because you have brick, concrete pavers, pea gravel. Can you go down a little bit, yep. Gabe? Yeah. Uh, white pebble, and then that small semicircular wood deck. So that's, that's five different surface materials going on in, in that fairly small area. And while and I was curious about what is the purpose of that wood deck? Because I wanted a place where I could set some out, so outdoor dining. It's pretty small. I just, it's I just wanted a, a nice place to sit and watch the traffic go by and yeah. just enjoy it. Feels homey, feels relaxed, mm -hmm. feels like it belongs on a you know, there's a fence there that I wanted to take advantage of, so. Well, according to the guidelines, decks are considered more appropriate in the rear of the property. So I don't know if that. Um, Ms. Sorensen, could you, um, could you clarify what's different about this proposal than, than the last proposal that we had, that we had uh, last time? Well, yes, ma'am. That would be helpful. Um, first of all, I did, uh, I could not, I, I don't know your plants well enough and understand your um, the zone here well enough to know. So I did have an architect, uh, the landscape architect, Barrington um, Landscape Architecture, came and did a consultation. So we changed the plants to and the surfaces to materials that he knew were already approved in the historic district or the, his, the historical review board had approved previously because he's done a number of the homes here in the area. So he, together with uh, Charlie from Earthscapes here in town, who's going to actually do the labor, and he did the consultation. So he's the one that uh, suggested the, the change of the materials. The only thing I would say here different is I would like the, the red brick that's there existing, the recycled brick that mm. all the recycled brick I was using, I wanted to do that in a soldier course okay. because it's already laid that way, and I just want to keep it the same. I just want to move it out. So, so just to clarify with the plantings, are there uh, different plantings or more plantings? No, the, it's as shown approximately. So is it, this is really uh, the These are the plants that he had suggested the, that are, we use. Are they more plants well, than you had last time? Or didn't you yeah. say when the transmittal gave that there were there more? There were more. Yeah. yeah, yeah I think that needs to be clarified, yeah. that there are more. You have more green oh, in yes, it than, than I you understand. did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And okay. if I could go on here. Mm -hmm. um, 
the the metal agave sculptures. Yes. Which aren't indicated on this. I'll be Is right that still your, your intention? Uh, that no, right I now that area has uh, plant material. Yes, sir. I I don't remember leaving that on there. I would like to use them yet, but I can use them inside my patio area or some other location. If I don't have them marked on there, we took them out when the architect was working with me. Okay. Moved it to the because inside the courtyard you can't see. Yeah. There's a fence across, that's the fence divides a big sliding door that goes into my kitchen. So I have an out, right outside the sliding doors is a, that fence you can't see through right there. Here, where it says private oh, patio. Oh, okay. okay. You can't see into that, mm -hmm. and oh, so I, I can put it, in, I need landscaping in there as well. Yeah. But it's all hidden. So we can say that the agave sculptures are not included on the, what we're looking at right this minute on purpose. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, can you go back to, to the site plan, Gabe? Mm -hmm. And then go up. Go up. To the up, 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 up. The note up there um, under that image of the pavers, and it says um, painted fence with graphic. What does that mean? That is that I would like to, once the fence is painted, add some a graphic element. It's on the side where it's on the private side between the two houses. Yeah. Well, I'd still be visible from the street, I believe. It, will, will it be visible from Main Street? Well, where no, where the note is, if it's going to be up sort of close no. to Main, it would be well, visible. If I don't, is yeah, but I don't have, I, that's just wording for something I want to do, and I can move it past the gate if you want. So that it's not vis visible from Main Street? Yes, ma'am, if that's what you want. Well, and then the note right up in the upper right corner, Craftsman Stencil. Yes, sir. Paint existing curb. Yes, sir. Could right you explain here? that? The I mean, I know what a stencil is. But. Okay. Um, in an arts and crafts mode, there was stenciling was a very popular element, both inside and out. There is a concrete, raw gray concrete curb that runs along the front of the house, and I just wanted to take that and not have it feel so concrete, have it feel like it belonged to the house. Hmm. Will that stenciling be um, visible from the house when you're sitting on the sitting on the porch looking at it, or visible all the way around the sidewalk? <clears throat> I was thinking on the sidewalk side, unless you have an objection to it. Well, that curve is continuous right down the street, and this would be the only area with that painted stencil on. So, another another issue of sort of. I guess a stencil to me to is, out. a stencil first of all is a very light application and so it's a faded aged look in the first place and then it also is open so that the raw concrete continues, it's just got some embellishment or color on it. So there's an openness to a stencil that the, the raw concrete is all visible through. Well if you did put it on the inside and not on the Main Street side it would be visible from your yeah, until the, until the landscape plants grew up and yeah. hit it. Yeah. That's all. Um, and is the flagpole still in the plan? Yes, sir. And the birdbath. Gabe mentioned that, I think. Hmm. Doesn't every American house need a flagpole right now? Um, well, I have a flag, but not a pole. Well, if you prefer one mounted on the fence, I could do that with the fence bracket if that's your preference. Mm -hmm. It's it, not important to me where it is, it's important that it flies out front. So if you prefer a flag bracket on the fence or something, that's fine with me too. I just wanted to fly a flag. Well, I don't have anything against a flag or a flagpole. It just adds to that sort of total number of things going on here that, that I'm still having. 
problem with. And that, I think those are my main comments about the form. So um, Peyton's point about the number of things that are in there is, is was our concern the last time. That's why I've asked. That's what we ask about you, how different this is from the last iteration of your application. Well, we we listed this very specific plants, and we did take out. I thought that what he was objecting to was the contrast between the black and the white, and so we took out the black and went with a more natural or organic look of the brown that um, is used all over the historic district because the landscape architect thought that that would be preferable to you, plus the color tone of that matches up with the color tone of the herringbone brick that I'm using to fill infill between the existing bricks since there was not enough or sufficient quantity of that to work with in the first place. On these um, side beds on either end of the, of the, of yes, the, of the yard there, is that, um, is that grass underneath the plants, or is that, did I, did I read uh, white pebbles? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I don't, um, I don't want to do mowing. I, my back won't allow it anymore. And um, Charlie and I had discussed doing something that could be weeded and cared for less frequently by him, because I can't do it. Okay, well, just clarify. One that. more thing then. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Concerning the plant material. Yes, sir. I've had a I've had a problem reading the labels on here because they're so small. Okay. And even blown up on my monitor, my screen, they're sort of blurry. But those ones right down at the bottom along the fence, does it say hydrangeas? Hydrangeas. Okay. Well, I thought that's it. I couldn't quite. Yes, sir. They suggested that because of the soil there um, and the colors that they would turn. Well, I love hydrangeas, but they're they're right up against the neighbor's fence. Yes, sir. Which well, there's about five, there's three, four foot there off the fence, mm -hmm. so enough for a bush width, because a bush of hydrangeas is usually three to four foot max, so they're within that. It just might make uh, it difficult, more difficult for the neighbor to maintain his fence if he, oh. if he wants to have it painted and so on. But I don't know. The, the, he has a, a beautiful, I don't remember the t name of the tree, but it's, it hangs right over my fence in that corner. So it's about halfway over the fence. I can't remember. It's a Japanese maple. I think. Japanese maple, that's what it is. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking advantage of his shade over there. Okay. Okay, one that's, more point of clarity. The, the black walnut needs, is, rubbing the roof so he's got some other trees that are dead along his fence line further back in the back part of the yard not in the front though um, so just to clarify when you're talking about approving the paint the the existing fence to paint it a natural white you're referring to that fence that we were just looking at yes ma'am okay all right one more point of clarification um, are with the uh, material of the of the flooring of the of the patio area. Uh huh. The, the existing flooring that we're looking at in our pictures right here uh, is brick. That's probably could possibly be the original brick. Yes, ma'am. We're reusing all of it. Sidewalk, sidewalk. Correct. There. We're it, recycling is, all of that. All right. Is it in um, Is it in poor condition? Is it coming up? It looks like it's It looks like it's pretty solid and set in there. No, it's been sanded in. It's actually concreted in or mortared in rather down the slope on the side of the house but in front of the house it's all loose laid in sand and uh, it's coming up it's actually at the front door it's kind of a trip hazard so it all had to be relayed it's the it's shifted so it's not laying real flat I doubt if it's original okay no okay. but it is old brick and it does match what's running down the side and it's mortared in on the backside sidewalk. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry, I just noticed one more thing here. All right. One of the one of your bullet or numbered items is approved signage. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, we took that off. Okay. Sorry, please that, delete. Okay. okay. I just didn't revise that word. Yeah. That was my last that was my last clarification. Oh, okay. We're, we decided to table it till we figured out further down the road. 
Okay. Yeah. There may be some things in the package just because the packet went out bef uh, before, well, after I got this new one. So there might be some things that have changed and everything. Okay. Yeah. Signage right. was one of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, you, would you like to say anything else anymore? Right now? No, we're not talking about paint color yet. Not right. Yet. That's I think we'll proposal. take the, we'll take these in logical pieces. Okay. So let's le deal with. No, the, unless you have questions for me, I'm fine. Okay. I Can think you've covered it. Okay. Okay. Can we have Can we have any comments from anybody else at this point? Uh, did they sign up at all, or is anybody for the front? Byron would like to. Okay. All right. And I just suggest that they be comments just on each of the sections. Yes, though. right. Yeah. Yes, so st state your name, please. Um, I'm Byron Giesler. I live at 228 East Main Street. And I would like to speak in opposition to the granting of a certificate of appropriateness with regard to the work to the front of the house. Um, you know, from a, obviously this board is guided by your guidelines. And our actual town of Abingdon guidelines uh, do not specifically address uh, this issue in a lot of detail. Um, you know, perhaps that's because I, I, I doubt that this board has ever had an application um, for this drastic or dramatic of um, changing of a property site in the town, especially a front yard. I mean, there's just there's so much here. Um, this is probably the first time that that, that has occurred, but. On the very um, inside folder of your guidelines, uh, they provide that the Historic Preservation Review Board will follow the Town of Abingdon, Virginia Review Guidelines and the United States Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. In addition, the Historic Preservation Review Board may rely on preservation briefs as promulgated by the National Park Service, U.S. Department of Interior, and such other similar resources. Unfortunately, there are a lot of um, resources from uh, the Department of Interior on um, proposed uh, new site features, which is what we're talking about here, new site features, the introduction of new site features um, to, the, to the front of this um, contributing structure. And on page 63 of the um, standards for the treatment of historic, historic properties, the guidelines specifically address the building site and they provide, uh, they actually warn that altering site features which are important in defining the overall historical character of the property so that as a result the character is diminished is not recommended. And then there's also a technical brief from the Department of Interior which addresses changes to historic sites and that brief provides the site of an historic building is usually essential in defining its historic character. Accordingly, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation require that a rehabilitation involve minimal change to the defining characteristics of a building and its site and environment. And then finally, there's a third publication that I think most closely addresses what we're talking about here. Um, it's a, a Department of Interior publication that specifically addresses new site features. And there are three important points that are made by that um, publication. One, new site features should be compatible with the building and significant landscape features on the site. Additionally, new site features should be consistent with the historic use of the property. Two, new site features should be unobtrusive as possible in both location and design. And three, new site features should preserve the historic relationship between the building and landscape features. So this application with regard to the proposed site structures to the front of this structure dramatically violates all those guidelines. Um, the applicant proposes to um, demolish the original sidewalk and create a southwest themed courtyard with earthen tone, uh, what she refers to as an earthen tone cobblestone rug, then nine trolley benches with white painted metal frames, a ceramic fountain, a stencil painted curb, white stone flower beds, and a raised deck, all in this very small space at the front of this structure. Um, so w when this board does what it has to do, which is compare that plan with these applicable guidelines, um, 
this plan is completely incompatible with those guidelines. Um, the proposed new features would be completely inconsistent with the historic use of the structure, which historically was a residence. Um, and, you know, al almost every, every time this board encounters either new construction or additions, that type of thing, the one thing that we, that you are called upon to do is to make those changes consistent with the historic district, make them blend in with the historic district, make them be compatible with the historic district, make them be unobtrusive. So this entire plan is obtrusive, it's, it's incompatible, it's a total new introduction to the front of the structure. Um, and really sort of the elephant in the room, the, the, the major problem is that what the applicant is trying to do is make this structure stand out. I mean, the, the trying to make it stick out, make it more visible, make it more noticeable, make it, make it differentiate from um, the rest of the surrounding structures and and that is running dead head dead, head on into what you are required to do which is to make sure that changes are compatible unobtrusive and inconspicuous so that's the, that's the big problem with the proposal is it's trying to do exactly what you were charged with not letting it do and finally I would I would warn against this board trying to redesign this plan for the applicant. I mean, there's a temptation to do that. There's a temptation to say, well, if you take this out or you do this or you do that. But the problem here is that the entire plan violates the applicable guidelines. And this board should not try to redesign this plan for the applicant. The applicant is charged with coming in with a plan that complies with our, your guidelines. and if it doesn't do that, then it should be disapproved and the applicant return with a plan that does comply with the guidelines. So the, the, the plan was presented last time. Uh, there was an effort on the part of the board to explain why it did not comply. There's been really very little change. Um, there, there's been some minor changes to the plan, but in terms of it being um, compatible, unobtrusive, and inconspicuous, there's, there's no change whatsoever. So I, I would ask the board to decline to grant the certificate of appropriateness. Thank you, Mr. Geisler. May I respond to that? You may. Um, if we leave it like it is right now, the entire side, left side, from the curb back is nothing but weeds and has had nothing but weeds for years. The first thing I did when I came was tear out some dying bushes that were blocking the entire view of the house and creating a maze through which I could not even get my furnishings in the house very comfortably. It had not been cared for for a number of years. The hedges were overgrown and dying, and they were all sheared, so it felt like a maze or a prison wall walking in. I don't see the drastic change. I'm recycling, I'm leaving the, the fence that's there, I'm leaving the perimeter brick, the historic brick that's there. If you want me to delete an item or two, I'm okay. I'll, I'll you know, I'll bend. But I've got plants in there that have been approved previously by this district. I have a, a couple of landscaping beds and not huge beds. Uh, all the plants I chose were chosen by a landscape architect from the area who has worked in this district extensively. And I, I guess I don't get it. I mean, I don't understand why keeping something that's ugly and obtrusive would be and not having any color or variety, I don't, I'm not a vanilla person. Now, I can get more vanilla, and I felt like this was more vanilla than it was last time by a long shot, but I'm a creative person. If you don't want me to stencil, okay, I won't stencil. If you don't want me to have a deck out front, I'm okay with that. My objective is not to match the whole community. My objective is to be a welcoming place for the community. This is a pastorate. This is a house that is bought for me, a pastor, as my parsonage. I want it to be a welcoming place. And I wanted it to be welcoming outside because there's a lot of people that aren't comfortable coming into homes that would just love to be able to sit and visit on a porch. So that's what I'm looking for, is that welcoming presence. And I want the courtyard effect because I wanted that welcoming. I wanted the benches because I want that welcoming. 
I want some plants that are low maintenance because I'm old and I don't want to have to take care of them. That's my perspective on it. I don't see it as that different or drastic. My house is set at least a good 10 foot back from the existing structures next door. It's way down in a shade. It does not get good sun. It's blocked by the hill across the street from the Martha. It's blocked by the two houses on the side. I need plants that are correct for the short amount of sunlight I get and that are a nice variety. So if you want less elements, tell me what less elements, but I'm getting out of the situation. If I come back another time, then in order to approve the entire thing, then the hardscape season, putting in the hardscape, which has to be first, before you can till and put in plants, I will have missed the complete season for planting. Not a good plan. I don't want to put in a bunch of plants to die. I don't have the kind of money to spend it four or five times landscaping, and I don't want to wait until fall to have to put some plants in and make pretty and get rid of the weeds that are there now. That's my thought. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could just just one minute. You, you may. So the town of Abingdon is full of beautiful, welcoming yards that are not dead, ugly, dead spaces. They're all over the place. You can have um, a beautiful, welcoming yard and still comply with the historic guidelines. There's no problem doing that whatsoever. This applicant needs to submit an application that complies with our guidelines. And until she does that, that the, the, the problem with the delay in this project is because she's failing to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this, on this one? I've commented previously, but I don't want that stand. OK, if you want to, but you need to come up here. No, that's OK. okay. Just a, a word about the planting. All right. I don't think anybody disagrees with you having plants. Okay. And, and if I, the labels that I was able to read, with that very small type, um, there are annuals there, which do, you have to do those every year, and, they, and you can't just sort of put them in and leave them there. So some of that. But you said that they I, were not, not use any I saw that word written somewhere. Just some ball. Can you zoom in? There's a ball area. And That's as all as it goes. Anyway, it, I don't. I think we shouldn't be focusing on which plants or whether they're appropriate there or not. It's at least from my concerns. It's it's not about the plants. I think the concern was. I think the concern, Ms. Sorensen, Ms. Sorensen, is the is the the general the general the general idea that this is a one of Abington's most important blocks, mm -hmm. most intact blocks we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. It is historically a residential block. It is still a residential block, except for the barter complex here. Mm -hmm. And um, as Mr. Geisler said, we follow the um, the Secretary of Interior's standards. We read briefs about this, and the idea is is to take care of the site itself as it impacts the building that it's sitting within instead of detracting from it. But if the guidelines are not specific and don't tell me specifically what you want, Just then all it is is a guessing game for me to come back over and over again because beauty is in the eye of beholder. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I do multi-million dollar home design. I understand beauty and I know how to achieve it. And so for me to guess what your idea of beauty is when it's not defined is like, like last time I came and we talked about paint colors. You told me what I couldn't paint. You said no. But then when I said, what can I use? You told me, we can't tell you what you can use. Well, if you can't tell me what I can use, then how can you tell me when I'm wrong? And that's what creates frustration for your public and your citizenry. So I want, if you've got specific things that you're not happy with, tell me what those are. Let's delete them off the plan. Let's get the hardscape and the planning done in a reasonable fashion or a reasonable time. So I'm just trying to get it before the summer planting season, right. knowing that you know it's over. So if I need to come back next month, I'm just saying the hardscape, if you want to approve the hardscape and you tell me this part of the hardscape you can do, that gets me moving 
towards being at least able to plant by this by next well, month. Well, so so far, just one second. So far, um, we don't have a whole lot of difference between last time and this time. And as Mr. Geisler stated pretty well, the um, the over it's the overall effect that just one minute. The, yeah, it's, I'm the listening. it's the overall effect here that is is basically just too much for this site within the um, within the district itself. Okay, so which and, element? And just a second. Just okay, a I'm second. listening. So it's it's all of it together. It's all of it together makes too much of it, which is why our guidelines suggest that these structures and, and what you've got there are better located in the rear yard. That's the reason for that, that it, in that in that area it doesn't diminish from, okay. the, from the building. It's so if you usable. feel that a deck diminishes and we remove the deck from the front yard, well, then what other elements are you, uh, okay, I got that. You objected to the craftsman stencil, okay, I've got that. What other elements then are too much? Well, honestly, we cannot design it for you. We'll say that again. I'm, I know you want us to, but we I, cannot no, do I that. Don't, I, it's, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm saying if the guidelines aren't specific enough so that it, I can interpret it and understand it, and if a landscape architecture, uh, degree uh, landscape gentleman who works at the community regularly suggested that this he thought would be fine, then he doesn't know either. So if the professionals don't know and the newcomers coming to town don't know, you've got us in a guessing game that's untenable. So all I'm saying is tell me what I have to cross out for sure, and I'll do that. Is my address plaque, can I put a craftsman address plaque at the front door with the address on it like I intend? Give me one by one. If I can't do a bird bath, well, my objective was to welcome butterflies and birds because I happen to think they're pretty. So, and enjoy watching them sitting on the front yard. So, we're tell going, me we're what to cross off. We're going to get to the house in just a second. We're just keeping okay. this confined to this one landscape plan okay. at the front right this so, minute. On that landscape plan, is there some items, specific items, you want me to cross off? So that I know that if I, whether I come back again, I don't want you to say, well, now I object to that, and I don't want that, and you know, let's let's tell me specifically what to cross off. I, I don't believe that we can tell you specifically what to cross off. I think you're going to have to understand the gist of the, of the, um, of the application itself as yes, violating the guidelines in a, in the most general way of detracting from the house because of the volume of things that you've got there. Okay. And, 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 and I think that if you sat down probably and, and read through some things, you might come up with a better Ma'am, I did plan. read the guidelines that I found available, but I, I'm not finding it, you know, am I forbidden to have seating in the front? No. Okay. Am I forbidden to have a step up over the curb? I left that curb in. I had taken the curb out last time that runs along my property on the width here. Go back up. Gabe, it's right there. It's between that circular looking bed and the square bed there. That's a curb that is existing. It's a concrete curb. My original intention after talking to Charlie was that we would take that out and level up the yard more. But the more I looked at the way the rain and the storm rains came down, I realized that everything's downhill right there and all of the water would roll right into the neighbor's basement door because her basement door is about four foot below my grade over here. So I thought, no, 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 then I've got to leave the curb and figure out how to work with a, a concrete curb that's there because I don't want to have a situation where I cause a water problem for her. And everything's running downhill. That's what water does. So I don't want it. That curb, that upper level there creates a place for the water to stop running so fast so that it doesn't run into her door. So I decided it needed to stay. So I redid the plan, including that. So what I'm saying is, I, there are certain elements I've got to work with. I want to work with the existing grip that's there. It's just not a big enough patio area for what I want. I want to work with the existing curb because I don't want to endanger the neighbor's property. So, and I wanted to work with the benches because I want the conversation area. So if those three things are okay, and the plants are not the real issue, then just tell me what I need to cross off and I can get moving. That's what I'm saying. 
I'd just like to say before we go on with any uh, you know, crossing off of items, this is not about us making suggestive, su subjective, suggestions, <laughs> yeah. suggest, subjective, subjective, you know what I'm saying. Yes, sir. About beauty. We're not judging whether this is beautiful or not. Each of us has our own personal opinion. Yes, sir. Like everybody in this room would have. It is about whether it's appropriate here in this location. Again, the house is a prairie style house. It's a craftsman. But we're not it is in the not prairie. just like its next door neighbors. It was not built in the era its next door neighbors were. It was built more than 100 years afterwards. To me, if you work with the natural environment, the way to have something that's timeless is you work with the architecture at hand, you work with the natural beauty and the lay of the land that you've been given. I have a beautiful view of the park, and I liked the location because of its walkability and its comfort and the fact that it's, it's there for entertaining. So it's perfect for what I was looking for. Now, how do I get to those things within your guidelines when your guidelines aren't specific enough except to just keep crossing off whatever I present? So that's why I said, I understand what your objective is. I'm not objecting to your objective. I'm saying my house is completely different I've invested a half a million dollars in Abington right now, and I have yet to finish spending the money that I need to spend to bring this house up to. It was, in, it was neglected since uh, the attorney passed away. It, somebody said it was a residence. It was not a residence. It has not been a residence in many, many years. It was a residence only in the 30s and early 40s. It's been an attorney's office and a professional office ever since then. I just want to bring it to be a warm residence that feels good, people are welcomed. Tell me what to cross off. Okay, Ms. Sorensen, like you may. This board has already told the applicant on at least four occasions that this board does not tell her how to design her project, that we don't cross things off. And what this applicant is doing is insisting on bulldozing ahead with their agenda. There are neighbors in the area, all in the historic district, that have spent a half a million dollars or less or more on their property. They have followed the guidelines. They have done what's required of them. This board has been in existence for over 50 years. The applicants that routinely come before this board understand the guidelines and are able to read them and able to submit applications on a routine basis that comply with the guidelines and have their projects approved. That's what this applicant should be required to do, and that's what this board should require of her. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Um, do we have any further discussion on this? We're, we're, what we're trying to decide right this minute is this one part, which is the landscape plan. We will get to the building in just a second, but this is the landscape plan itself. For the front yard. For the front yard, yes. Yes, we haven't gone to the rear yard. The landscape plan for the front yard, which has the uh, natural fence painted white. It has the um, brick pavers in, in the design that she has asked for. It has the landscape beds of they, as they have been described by Mrs. Sorensen. It has the deck, it has the flagpole, and it has a bird bath. So um, if there is if there any further discussion, if not, I would like to <coughs> entertain a motion to approve or deny the application, this part of the application. Sure, can we read into the record just what it says about sidewalks and walkways? Just, mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm not sure if you've read this section, but it says sidewalks and walkways that are original to the building or found elsewhere in the block in which they are situated should be preserved. So that's one of the pieces that the code. But the sidewalk is in front of my property. But I'm just saying. And, and we're then, not touching that. I hear you, but I'm just saying what the code says as far as walkways and sidewalks. Sidewalks and walkways installed for a building should preferably be of smooth concrete, compatible in details, dimension and placement with original or early sidewalks. Key gravel secured with appropriate um, proprietary systems is also appropriate. And then the last one says brick pavers or pavers that replicate brick may be appropriate in some instances. So that's really, you know, from the code when it, you know, when they're talking about these different, when you're talking about different colored rocks and, you know, different pavers, that section is 41B, which is really the section that talks about 
sidewalks and walkways that are associated with the building. So, but aren't the only place that I'm talking about rocks is in flower beds in lieu of mar of, of uh, mulch because mulch just washes away. Mm -hmm. And so the only place that there is anything that is not listed right there is inside flower beds that are not walkways. It was only for, you know. Do we have any further any further discussion? Yes. Are you, is your intention to have a vote now or to, to vote on everything at the I end? I think we should vote these in separate separate sections. This, separate. So this is going to be a separate vote on the land on the landscape at the front of the house. Right, but would she should we have it now or should we, we have should separate have votes? I at think the we end? should have it now. Are you taking every? I mean, so a lot of times we don't take everything at once. You, I mean, yes. just in the last in the last right. case you had, you mm -hmm. had two votes for right. a very small situation. Yeah. So, are you wanting to vote on the six items, or I, are I, you wanting I, I, to? I would like for us to vote because this is such a complicated pro project. I think we probably should take it step by step, and this is the this is the items that uh, have been that you've listed here for us that have to do with this the plan that's in the front of the front of the building right here. Sure. And so the the way that we've done it in the past, like she and again, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, so you correct me if I'm wrong, but you said you wanted to remove the deck, you wanted to remove the stencil, you wanted to remove the bird bath. Um, and so what you would be voting on <coughs> is the pavers, the landscaping bed, and the roughly nine benches. That's all that's left, if I understand what you just said you wanted to take off your request. The, the flower beds. Correct. The pea gravel and the papers. And the benches. And the benches. Correct. Okay. Um, Ms. Sorensen. Yes, ma'am. So you are confirming that you want to remove those things from your, th I thought that was just a conversation. I'm willing to. You, you said you were willing to. I, didn't. I am willing to and I will. I'm just, I'm trying to find where, you know, Bird bath is offensive. I'll take the bird bath off. If the, you know, if the deck I can understand more because of what you're saying, sir, about the front back of the issue. I'm okay with that. Let's take it off. Um, the stencil that runs continuous. I don't care. We'll do something different. I'll find a different way to be creative and artistic. Miss White, if yeah. I could make a comment. You sir, you must come up here, Nick. Nick Proctor at 11092 Tree Line Drive. Um, I'm opposed to the design. I think it's from a design philosophy is fundamentally flawed, which we've discussed this evening. But um, just as the public trying to follow this conversation and what's in and what's out and what's cut in and what's out, I think is hugely confusing. And I can only imagine what it is for you all. So I think it should not be approved until there's a, a clean drawing that shows exactly what is, you know, clear labels, clear species, clear materials, all of that specked out on it to provide the clarity that's necessary to make a decision and to allow the public to be able to review and see a clean version of what's actually being proposed in any house. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I believe his I believe his comments are, are well taken that it is confusing and it is it is confusing now to have things pull in and pull out and so it's probably going to be um, a, a better idea for us to go ahead and approve or not approve the application as it is presented tonight that's not your common practice just to be clear uh -huh. um, so you do get into a kind of a dangerous situation if you don't use your common practice so I would either suggest that mm -hmm. you tell her that you want a clean drawing with pavers, benches, landscaping, and pea gravel, which is what she has indicated she's willing to keep on the drawing. So similar to our facet situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, we found that in those cases you made motions on different things and then he had to remove a bunch of stuff and bring a bunch of things back. Um, I guess similarly to um, well, well, the Wampler one as well, mm -hmm. where you identified different things every time. So. My suggestion is that you, that if she if she hears clearly what she's willing to remove and she brings back a clean version, I mean that's something I would suggest is something you could ask. But um, well, well you I think do, that yeah. I th I th Go ahead. I'll speak to that. All right. Um, having having served eight terms uh, 
I'm sorry, four terms on this work review board. It is the common practice for this board to approve or disapprove applications. We don't just, you know, go along and say we'll go back and change this. If someone wants to resubmit a new application with the changes, they can do that. But it's it's not the requirement that this board every time not disapprove a certificate of appropriateness. I mean, that's what we do. We approve or disapprove certificate of appropriateness. All right. So therefore, the, the, I think the confusion arose right here was it just in the course of a conversation, it appeared that you were willing, as you said, the word willing. It wasn't that I withdraw. It was if you like it better, you would, uh, you, you withdraw. Words, withdraw. You, we, and and, for, and so therefore, sure. it puts it into a different. Uh, it makes it into a different application that is going to take a long time to make sure we we are aware of what you want to do. I mean, we we definitely want to be able to. Um, find some sort of consensus here, here of course. So, so therefore, um, what what we can do then it, it, with it, this is one section, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to say I'm going to let you stand here and say what it is you want to do in the front yard right now of what you have given us to approve, and we're going to take a note on that. Okay, the landscape beds. So I can get the plants in timely. All right. The hardscape of the pavers and the brick and the pea gravel. Uh, the trolley benches, if you want to try, well, uh, the trolley benches. And I think that was it. The landscape beds, the trolley benches, and the pea gravel. That gets me way down the road. And the trolley, it, the, yeah, those four items, right? Okay. Yep. Go ahead. And we'll withdraw everything else. Okay. H how about the, so you withdrew the painting, the fence white? Oh, I'm sorry. No, because I was thinking that was part of the painting, the, the whole paint of the house. So, okay. no, I do want to paint the fence. Okay, so delete it. So it's not in great shape. It needs to be painted. Okay. It's, you so know, when you it's say, aged. When you say four things, you have said, um, you've said the landscape oh, beds, you've said the pavers with pea gravel, yeah. And you have said the nine benches, and I, did, I don't know what you said was the four. Did you withdraw the flagpole and the bird bath? Oh, I, I do want a flagpole. So that's four. The flagpole's four. Um, there was another one. If you I could said four a minute ago. If I could interject for clarity, maybe here. Okay. So stuff that you that she's going to say she's going to withdraw, possibly, if, she's, if she so chooses here, is the stencil, the deck, and the bird bath. The things that she's gonna have on the plan that she will submit to us for a review are the pavers, mm -hmm. flower beds slash landscape beds, the nine benches, mm -hmm. the pea gravel area, mm -hmm. the fence painted white, and the flagpole. Okay. And the, and the steps, because I need to have those in order to retain the retaining wall. Mm. And the other sculptures. Those are no longer going to be. They, we've taken them yeah. off because. Oh, you're listing what you proposed yeah. to put in. Okay. Yes. All right. Are you determined to have white gravel there in those two beds? I'm sorry, sir. I'm have I'm a little hard of hearing and I can't quite hear you. Are He's you determined to have white gravel in those two semicircular beds, in addition to the brownish gravel? Mm, no, I just. Think the contrast mm -hmm. is prettier, but if you want me to take white, do you, is I know there's mulch all over. I mean, what? I just don't. The mulch just washes out for me, so that's why I was saying it, I thought the rocks the, are better. It's the white. Oh, um, it's the white, sir. Okay, how about an earth tone, a mixture of earth tones? Well, you're going to have trouble keeping those two separate anyway. I mean. That was some edging. Oh, okay. so you're just saying run the pea gravel in there and just let the plants be in the pea gravel. I'm okay with that. It's not a color change. And so these items, I mean, in no way, shape, or form have they made a motion to approve these. These are just what we're trying to clarify and you are willing to keep in. Okay. Yeah, so to make a, to make a, a complete motion here. So to, to reiterate that for everybody, would you do it one more time, Gabe? So we have the pavers in the front, the flower beds slash landscape beds, 
uh, the nine benches, roughly, the pea gravel, the white uh, painted fence, or the fence to be painted white, excuse me, the flagpole, and the steps uh, that are next to the retaining wall there. All right. Okay, so there is now um, now a firm application for the front part of the of the house before we move on to the house itself. So, do I have a motion? Are the benches going to be attached to the ground? They can be. They're currently made so that they can screw down or not screw down. They're freestanding. I'm only asking because it's furniture, and I don't know that we have really ever weighed in on furniture that's movable. We have not. No. It was just that included in there to, for fully description to show you the full yeah. pledge of the plan, but you have right. never really reviewed benches or any sort of fur bond furniture to say. I'm just saying I don't think we can say yes or no on the benches. We can say we don't. We think there may be too many of them, and, and it just adds to the sort of crowded situation. But if they're furniture, they're it's adding no to, the, to the overall, to the a overall folding look lawn chair out there. Well, okay. it's obviously <clears throat> not going to stop the planting to not set the benches out there. So if you prefer, we leave the benches off for now, and I get everything else hardscape done and planting in. And then I have you over for coffee next <coughs> meeting after the meeting, and you can sit down and decide how many benches should be there. I'm okay. <laughs> I just, I want to get the hardscape, I want to get the planting in. I, I grew up on a dairy farm, and I farmed 360 acres of land. I know what it means if you miss planting season. I just want to get the plants in, get the hardscape done if I can. That's all. I am concerned with the extent of the hardscaping. I'm in the in the pictures uh, before, it had a very green, you know, even though the bushes were overgrown, we had a lot of organic material. You do have plantings here, the butterfly bushes, all of that is great, but I am concerned that when you look at the home and you, when you see other craftsmen homes in the town, they all typically have a yard or some more planting beds. I just feel like there's a lot of hardscaping. Um, so are you counting the pea gravel as hardscaping then? Mm -hmm. I am. And, and the whole front yard of the home becomes a courtyard, but you have the lovely porch to entertain on as well. Um, I mean, yeah, a, a pair of people can sit there comfortably, maybe three, mm -hmm. but that's all. That's just one of my... Not a Bible study. Mm -hmm. the, uh, <clears throat> the only other thing that would, I think, look any kind of appropriate gets back to a mowing issue in my mind because you wouldn't want that that upper section of that area doesn't look very big when you're standing out there it looks bigger on paper than it feels when you're standing there but I just didn't want to I did I was looking for a way to not mow it all and get rid of the weeds so can you pull up the picture of what it looks like right now not the other one. That's what it looks yeah. like right now. And I will say for on the record too that this picture that you saw, the lush bushes and everything, those have not been there for years since the house has been vacant in a sense. So that picture that you saw, it was from years ago. For, mo for most recently and for quite a long time, it's been pretty bare like this. There was enough dandelions there to make tea, though. Did uh, Nathan tell you how big the, the mature um, arborvitae will be? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, he was using the, the small, and they would be um, oh, two to three feet. Um, uh, height is what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, 24 to uh, 30 inches, not very tall, mm. was the max. OK. But we'll introduce some more green into the, mm -hmm. to sort of help balance the hardscape, maybe. So are we ready for a motion now on, on, on this, whether to approve or not approve this part of the, of the um, presentation and the application for the front part of the house, the landscaping plan for the front part of the house?
We can make a motion to approve the application as presented or to deny the application as presented. I feel like it's incompatible with the um, the block with some of this design. I would like to see it um, again, maybe toned down a little bit. So I make okay. a motion to deny the certificate of approvedness. Okay. The um, the application has been um, the motion is to deny the application as it is presented. Uh -huh. I would. Before we do that, I would just say make sure you specify what sections you are denying, because when you say the whole, when you say survey appropriateness, it could mean the whole thing. Uh, so you want to make sure um, of what we of what we are what we are discussing now, which is the front part of the landscape, the items that we just listed, those those that we just listed. Yeah. So I would say in your motion, you are you are denying the front courtyard portion of the of the COA. That would be yes. the. Problem. Yes, that's, so, that's what she's, yeah. that is what she's that's doing. What okay. Okay. Second? I'll second it. Peyton Boyd seconds the, um, the uh, motion. Uh, Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. Mrs. Bone? Aye. Thank you, Ms. Sorensen. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving okay to so we're going to move now to the house. To the backyard. We're Boyd. doing all the landscape first. All right. Yep. So for the backyard, the applicant proposes to paint the existing unfinished wooden uh, picketed fence running along their property's eastern boundary line, natural white. Um, underneath the existing wooden deck uh, will be a space paved with earthen tone concrete pavers, so the same pavers that you saw, and it'll just be underneath the decking. Um, a metal frame uh, fire pit will be placed in the backyard as well along with a ceramic fountain and associate planting as shown as submitted. So if I go to, give me one sec here, if I go to the plan, or site plan I should say, and we go to the back, the deck, so this walkway goes approximately here. You'll have pavers right underneath the decking. The fence will be painted white. Here is your metal uh, fire pit that we do have some in the historic district already that are located in the backyard. And I believe that was it for this one, for the backyard portion. So you've got pavers underneath the deck, metal fire pit, painting the uh, existing fence white as currently unfinished. Okay. So not the new deck at this point? So we're no, we're not talking, no, the deck is part of the structure. It's part of the addition. Okay, so, so we're, we're just, just doing we're just doing the landscape piece of the backyard. So that's the three the three items that Gabe just uh, mentioned: the painting of the um, fence, the fence that is on the e east side, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. And the fire pit, adding the fire pit and adding the brick pavers underneath the deck. Wasn't there a water feature as part of that? A fountain right here. Did Did we mention that? Yep, it's right it's, here. That's a recirculating fountain. It's just a little. It's a ceramic. I just want to make sure it's covered. If is if it on here? It's on that. It's right here. Yeah, it's there's, a, there too. there's an image of it. But it's not. A, it's not on what you just said. No, it is. It's as well as a, with a ceramic fountain and associated planted plantings, as shown on the plan submitted. It's in the staff report that I wrote up here. It's in the backyard section. Okay. On page thirteen. Okay. 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 All right, Ms. Owenson. Uh, yes, sir. Would you I'm, like to speak to this? There's no, there's nothing else to say. That's Gabe covered it all. Okay. All right. We have any discussion of that? Do we have a motion? Do we have? I move motion? we approve those enumerated items in the. Okay. Rear landscape. Eight and move to approve. Rear yard. Approve. I'll second that. Or seconds that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Boyd. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mrs. White. Aye. Mrs. Bond. Aye. All right. Thank you. Yes. Now, uh, the next thing will be um, the, the front, the, 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 the building main structure. itself. The, the main, main structure the or, the, or the contributing structure that's on the site. Okay. So, so, on the main street side. Uh, it's just yeah, main street side. Yep. Okay. 
So now we're going to go back around front and look at the painting for the, the paint for the um, house. And if uh, okay. you have some paint colors, if you want to bring those up. Here's some of those if you want to pass this around. So for the original brick portion, uh, the applicant proposes to paint the front and rear uh, shed dormer siding in arched fascia. Uh, Sherwin-Williams, it's uh, breezy. It's more of a lighter gray, I would say. Uh, the main entrance door uh, facing West Main Street, West Main Street in brackets, uh, Sherman Williams Bungle House Blue, that's more of a darker toned down blue. I know last time I think the printer maybe made it look like more of a turquoise, but she provided you with a paint sample. This is right, correct. Uh, uh, the porch ceiling will be painted Sherman Williams serenely. Trim and all other remaining architectural features are to be finished natural white. Um, a cast bronze address plaque will be attached to the brick wall to the right of the main entrance door facing West Main Street. And a semicircular six inch high deck using composite wood will be will attach to the far west side of the main uh, structure facing West Main Street. So we just deleted that, but yes, that was in here, so I just had to read it for uh, gotcha. the record. But yeah, we kind of touched on that one in the front landscaping portion. Did you have a sample of the, of the serenely? Uh, no, sir, it's about 50% of the other color, but it is pictured on the other board. They didn't send that one. 50% of the it's on the, one? It's on the um, thing I submitted to you. I got you. Give me one sec. It's right it here. Is. So it's even. It's about 50% of breezy. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's the underside, the B board <clears throat> side of the porch ceiling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, and then oh, I have a logo mark. Oh no, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, Miss Sorensen, you'd like to speak to that, to the paint colors. Pardon me. Would you like to speak to the paint colors? How you chose them? Uh, no, you said lighter, and I chose lighter and uh, less dramatic, and I went around and found some neutrals that seemed good and ordered a whole slug of paint samples. Okay. So, and the natural white is just a warmer white. It, it'll blend to the older color of the, um, the windows on the front. All right. So shall we have a discussion of that before we move around to the back? Would you like to move around to the back mm -hmm. for that one now? Okay. Mm -hmm. It really is, it's the reason you really can't trust photocopies when you're trying to judge colors. Which is, which is why it's a good thing to bring yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I think we should, going forward, we should just insist on real samples. Okay. And the bigger the better, like this, this is good. So these same colors are on the back, are they not? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the siding is one color, all the trim is one color, and then the doors, the bungle house blue. Okay. So do you have something to say? Okay. I do have the rear edition, so yeah. I think right. we'll go through the rear edition, and mm -hmm. then you can make a motion for mm -hmm. the front portion and then mm -hmm. the addition. Mm -hmm. So the rear frame addition, the applicant is proposing to cut a door opening uh, centered on the north elevation of the rear frame addition. The door opening will be the same size as the existing and previously approved door openings found in the west and east elevation, so it'll just be centered on the north facing elevation under, right underneath the deck. Um, the door will be installed, uh, is identical to the Craftsman style door previously uh, approved the, at the March 2023 meeting. Uh, the wooden deck will be torn down and reconstructed using wooden posts, uh, composite wood decking, and have a metal 42 inch high railing all painted white. There will be two additional wooden posts at the corners of the deck to provide more support. The uh, proposed railing is comparable in design to the, uh, oh, this was before. Oh, it's to the existing neighborhood. However, the railing would be a material change. So the original decking is all wood. She's proposing to change the railing of it to raise the height up to 42 for code standards to make it more safer. And she's proposing to change the railing from a wooden to a metal. But really, the profile of it would be the same. It's just a material change. And there are other metal railings around porches in the OH district. So it's comparable with, surrounding neighbor with the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, the two posts that will be put in to provide more support. So she will be keeping, pretty much rebuilding it as it is, except doing 
two new posts right here at the corner to provide more stability because it is sagging a little bit based on how it's cantilevered. The decking, which you discussed at your previous meeting and you said you would be in favor of it if uh, she came to show you exactly what it would look like. It's a composite decking and it would just be the floor decking of the deck itself. Not the, not the supports or anything, everything else would be a wood, but the railing would be metal, painted white, everything else would be wooden, aside from the decking of the deck, that would be a composite wood. And she's adding two wooden posts, one here on this side, and then one on the far side here to provide more support for the deck. And, and I'm redoing those, the post on the far right, isn't even touching the ground anymore. Yeah, it's it, swinging. It's free swinging. So um, yeah, <laughs> I know there was, there was a sign when I bought the house on that door, big sign on, on that door of, of my bedroom saying "Do not go on the balcony." And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, there was a dot, a dead tree and coming up through the middle of it too, and that didn't help <clears throat> with the rotting. <clears throat> but um, I'm doing footers under those as well, yeah. under those posts. All of them need footers. So I'm doing the Bigfoot, I think it's on the drawing yeah, I sent you, the Bigfoot, Bigfoot footers, which are concreted in, and then a, a, sta a post standoff, which is a Simpson strong tie metal standoff so that it doesn't rot again. And they'll be pretty inconspicuous, the footings. That's yeah, why I just did that it. all that's, disappears. Yeah, that's why I didn't include them in this, because they're pretty much, they're, they disappear, so they wouldn't be under your purview in a sense. They're just extra anchoring. They're just something anchoring. the inspector wants, yeah, and just, I. Yeah, they're just under extra anchoring. So. Yeah, we, we can't comment on the structural design. That, yeah. that, that goes to the building inspector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, um, also gave, um, I wanted to paint the underside of the deck and the posts the white yep. because they look really tired now and it'll blend better with the house to have more white trim. Okay. Is that railing a pre finished? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on the illustration I sent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Right there. There it is. Right. Okay. I can't rebuild what's there because it doesn't meet code. Mm -hmm. So there's no sense in investing in it when it's rotted and it doesn't meet code. And I will probably add, it's probably safe to assume that the deck's not historic. It was probably built on sometime after the addition was put on or when the addition was put on. Mm -hmm. So. So does that complete the um, the structure, the paint, and the yes, that okay. completes and the, and the, the door, the door on the back. Is the lights part of that, Gabe? No, that's yeah. for the garage and everything that we have here. Okay, but they also are on the house too, by the doors. Oh, you didn't have those on there. You didn't have these on the plan here. Uh, the front ones are not changing, just all the rear ones, because the the glass is all broken out of them and they're colonial. Okay, what were you going to change them to? The ones that you I, have. The now? same ones that are on the illustration. Gotcha. They're illustrated there. It's the out. craftsman uh, with the, <clears throat> there's a post out there now, and so there's one post light, and there's a total of five, two of the a garage uh, wall-mounted carriage house lights, these here, and then there's uh, one by each doorway going in on the, on the lower level. Okay, those were- Well, no, one on the upper level, sorry. One on the upper level on my, over the, be uh, the deck, and then one on each, by each side door at the entry doors. Okay. okay. I didn't include those because I didn't see them on the plan there. So that's why, but let me see. If I can. Yeah, oh, right up there. there. And then these two are here. And then the other one is on that side that you can't see over here, and then one's by the new door. Correct, on the sides. Mm. This is where the new door is that you approved at your last meeting. This is the existing. So right now we're going to approve a door. Go back to that one if you would. We're approving the door in this, just right there in the center. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually just to the right of the center. It's between the right and left posts. Okay. Right now there's three vertical posts supporting the deck, and mm -hmm. it's between the yeah. two on the far side. Yeah, okay. it's fairly centered on. Centered the, there. Yeah, pretty much centered. Fairly on centered the, on, on the. Not edge. centered on the full. No, deck. no. Okay, so I think I think we've got a full explanation of the house itself and the paint as well as the new door back there and the uh, rebuilding of the deck. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, do we have any comments? Do I have a motion? All right.
Valley Street, Northwest, and I um, also live in, live in a craftsman style brick bungalow home. My understanding of that that period of home, typically the colors are not blue, um, and the dormer windows are typically not painted blue, or, an, or a red or a yellow, they're typically a white or a black or a gray or a taupe. Um, I just think in, in whatever happens on the front, probably needs to be consistent to the back. And I know the back, part of it's not historic. So if, we, if you all approve those colors on the front to be blue, then the back will also be all blue. And it can't be one or the other, I don't think. I don't think it could be split up and look right. So I guess my concern is just the color, the historic colors that she's proposing. Okay, thank you very much. So just to clarify on that, maybe just, just to make sure. So the dormer itself is gonna be painted the same color, both the front and back. So it's not gonna be two different colors. Is that correct? Yes, it's yeah. the yeah. natural it's white trim, and the, all of the siding is the same color, Yeah. the breezy. So there won't be any change in no, like there's no change to the si siding is one color front door and just the brackets are the darker color and mm. then the siding is the light gray mm. blue and then the trim is all the natural white everywhere fences deck mm. trim that's all going to stay white this is i believe the siding is going to be the breezy yes along sir. with the dormer siding so that'll be all and breezy. that is by the way, those are colors from the Arts and Crafts color palette from Sherwin-Williams. So they, those are the colors that are recommended for craftsmen. They are part of the Sherwin-Williams recommendation for craftsmen. Style. Yes, ma'am, and they're the, his, they're the Arts and Crafts historic colors. Okay, so I think, uh, do we have anybody else who would like to say anything? Yes. The only concern that I, I would like to express with regard to the paint is, and I know that this board traditionally is fairly flexible with regard to paint colors because it's just paint, um, but it, it does seem that just picking out those details of the brackets and painting those an alternating color um, is going to be, um, you know, conspicuous and obtrusive is going to stand out and, and not not really blend in with the rest of the historic district so um, if, if that could be changed I think I would submit that, that would be desirable I, I know again that we don't normally this board doesn't normally dictate paint colors but in terms of the overall appearance of the structure that that seems to be problematic thank you. okay thank you uh, let, let me just clarify that for, for everyone, you're, you're asking that the brackets be a different color than well, what's presented. The color as the sign as the color of the color of This color? The fascia, the soffit, the wrapper tails. The, this color. The, change the brackets to a, a, the color of the, um, of the, of the off-white. The trim color. I agree with that and, and that um, which then limits the front door to be the only thing that gets this deeper, more intense color. All right. Any 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 more discussion? Okay. Can someone make a motion? I would suggest when you make your motion that you make it for the main structure first, and then we do the addition, the rear addition. This way, we're just staying consistent. The, the rear addition to the main structure. Yeah. So okay. first thing we're going to do is main structure, original brick portion, as I have outlaid here in the staff report, and then we'll go back and do another motion for okay. uh, the addition part. Of okay. It. So just the paint, in other words. So just the paint, just the paint, in other words, at this point. She did have an address plaque. Yeah, and a plaque well. on there. Okay, and the, oh, and the address plaque. The, your address plaque that's on the, on the house. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's just the uh, address plaque and the paint colors for the front of the house, for the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Not the addition to the back. The, for the brick 
original portion the, of the house. The original not, brick not portion, the right. Excuse me, yes, the original brick portion of the house, yes. Okay, all right, okay. Motion somebody? I'll move to approve that painting scheme as presented uh, for the brick all right. portion of the house. Do you with the with the amend with the um, change to the brackets? Yeah. All right. There's been a motion on the floor to approve the paint scheme as presented with the one at one change to the um, painting the brackets the color of the trim. I'll second that. Mr. Anderson has seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. Mrs. Bond? Aye. Okay. okay. Now we're moving back to the addition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, uh, just to clarify that, we're talking about painting it the um, this this color. Is this right? No. The siding no. will be breezy. It so will be this one. That one, yeah. Okay, so the back color will be this one. Yep. And as well as all other trim will be the white color. Okay. And the porch will be all white. Okay, so it's these two colors that we're talking about right here. Yep. All right. And we also are approving the door, the new door. Yep. And the deck being rebuilt as described um, with the flooring that looks like this flooring, as well as um, white metal railings. Mm -hmm. I think that has it? Yep. Okay. Okay. Any comments or discussions? Any more? Do I have a motion? I'll put that in motion. Okay. Mr. Anderson has moved to approve the application as as, as we just said. Mm -hmm. Can we do we need to say it again? No, no, you're good. It's <laughs> okay. pretty much as presented. All so right. You're all good. Okay. Very good. All right. Second. I'll second. Brooke Bond seconds. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. Mrs. Bunn? Aye. Okay. All right. So now for the can last. I, can I clarify? Yeah. Could you ask whether or not the motion included this address plaque? Because I did not hear that. I just heard about the paints. I think they said it was we presented. Said it. We said it there. Yes. Did you capture that? I did not. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was, well, it, it, was, it, was it was in as presented, yes. Yeah. So the address plaque is in there. Okay. All right. Okay, so for the last thing we have is the garage, which is a non-contributing structure on the site. Uh, the applicant is proposing to paint the wooden or wood uh, substitute clapboards, Sherwin Williams Breezy, so that's the same as what you just saw for the addition siding there. Um, trim and all, all, all other architectural features will be a natural white finish, so it's pretty much mirroring the addition's paint scheme. Uh, fixed mounted shutters will be attached to each uh, garage window respectfully found on the northern and southern elevations. Uh, we do have fixed shutters in the historic district for some structures as we see, as we have. Uh, three new lighting fixtures will replace two existing metal fixtures found on either side of the existing uh, wooden paneled garage doors and the third attached to a post close by. So as you can see here, here's one. Here's one, and they're all pretty busted out. And then there's another post right back here that has the same kind of lighting fixture. Uh, the existing wooden panel garage doors will be replaced with an eight glass panel doors uh, with a metal frame painted white, or pre-finished white, I should say. So these doors would be replaced with this type of garage door, which is pretty much an eight panel glass door with a metal frame and such. And that is all I have for you for that. So I go back. So that's a different door than was yes. earlier. Yeah, that is a different door than what you saw at um, the March meeting. And for both the doors? Yes, sir. Because you requested last time that both doors match. So I just wanted to know how you proposed to put a three-foot door in the wider opening. I mean, I didn't. But anyway. Yeah. So you're, so you're not having a door, a person door there, it'll just be no, a one. No, sir, I'm going to use the side door, continue yeah. to use that side door. So those two garage doors are going to be the same, the same thing except a different material, the, the glass that you've... 
They're the same as, yeah, the, the illustration is correct. The other two, the, the one garage door, the panel has gotten damaged before I bought it, so the garage doors aren't in great shape. So I was just gonna replace both garage doors. Okay, as they, are, as they look now, the same shape they are now. Correct, I'm not changing the, okay. the, the uh, no, they, that doesn't need to be changed. That dog ear, the, the garage door is rectangular. Okay. It doesn't have the shape that the, the corners do on the outside. Right. Can we just put on the record um, that usually for garage doors, we wooden or metal painted. So, and I described that to the applicant too when we were going over the, some of the changes that we put in. So she is aware that that is what's preferred. So we've never really seen this kind of, these kind of garage doors before. So, but I just want to make you know that, you know, we had a conversation as we were going through the plan and that's something I made the applicant aware of. My, obje my objective was to get a lot more light into the space so that if I decided down the road that I needed to use that space for something different, um, than parking my car. I wanted the natural light. There's, there's a lack of natural light because both neighbors have a lot of trees running down both sides and I just don't have very much natural light in my house or in anywhere. Even, so, even if I'm sitting in the asphalt, there's not a lot of natural light. So there's, it's glass or is it some like a... It's a plexiglass. It's a plexiglass. frosted. Translucent. The translucent, yes, sir. Trans, translucent, but not transparent. Right. And it is anodized aluminum, uh, a powder coat finish. And you're proposing to put a, um, a, a people walk-in door on the on the south-facing side of that. A what? A, a, a door, a new door. No, is, is that on the garage? So, no, there's so no, no door. That door is already existing. So that that more door we see is the only one that's going to be there. Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. Other than the garage doors. Yes. yes. Okay. And then I was adding the shutters just to give it a little bit more of a Craftsman okay. cottage look than a 1950s <coughs> frame okay. garage. Okay. Well, shutters, even though there there are some in the district that are not operating or nailed to the side of the building, but our guidelines discourage those. Yeah, I just want to make you aware that we do have some in yeah. the district. Well, there are a lot of so. things that didn't get done according to yeah. code or guidelines for whatever reason. Uh, but I, I mean, I, this is a matter of sort of practice. I, I just don't. Like Do you the want them on hinges, you're saying? Would you prefer they be hinged? Well, the point of ones on historic structures is that typically they were sure. hinged. Well, that was know, because and they functional. were functional. Yeah, exactly. But we no longer need them for function, yeah. so. But personally, I don't like to I don't like to use them if they're not there <laughs> for a purpose, but you know, It's just this it was the siding was pretty boring. I mean, the garages are Pretty boring. Mm -hmm. So, did you investigate workable shutters? I can hinge and make any of the shutters operational if that's what you prefer. It's not. It's just a matter of the way they're attached. Um, I carried a line called Mid America that has the hinges and the, you know, the the. the uh, the trim to mm -hmm. make it look like it was functional, even if it wasn't too. Mm -hmm. All right. And they have to be sized so that they actually could be closed and meet. Sure. The only thing I'd have to check is the distance from that window to the door. On the other side, you've got the entire, I don't have a picture of that, but you've got the entire width of the garage. On that side, you have the mm -hmm. door it's probably in plenty of room, but I'd have to just check that to make sure that the width of that, when it laid open, mm -hmm. would be proper. Mm -hmm. Well, it probably is where you, where you have them now that it's open all, all the time. It probably would be. Yeah, I, yeah, right. That's why I said I just need to confirm right. the distance from the door to the window to okay. make sure that, I think the window's about 34, so there'd have to be 17 inches plus the trim of the door to not look bad or not be jammed into each other. So in really 
this side this it was added in the report because this side you can't see but the other side you can from plum alley of the garage so you correct me if i'm wrong yeah but like the applicant has mentioned that the window is pretty wide for what it is and the, she has a door right there so i think her reasoning was fix shutters would negate her having to maybe have a shutter go right into the door and have them still appear that there are some shutters there that's why she went for the fixed addition mm -hmm. if i'm correct in your you're from correct. our discussions and before. right and you're not going to run out in a hur there's no hurricanes here it's not like my house in puerto rico where i had to have shutters um here we don't have that same issue and the windows are up so high and they're in a garage you really i mean i can't imagine myself leaving the house in the middle of a storm to go out there and shut those shutters so is this the this is the well, this is the picture that we're talking that's about right here? This is correct. Oh yes, ma'am. Right. That's okay. That's the inside side, not this, not the Plum Alley side. The Plum Alley side looks identical, except that there is not a doorway. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Right. But you can see how much wall space there is, and why I felt like it needed some kind of get there. We go. Detail. So what have you proposed on this side? Just the shutters and the paint? Just the shutters and the paint. And the painting the fence. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So both both windows are to have shutters. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Anybody ready to make a motion? Have you um, the door with all the glass panels. Um, have you looked into the Craftsman style garage doors that have? I have, but they have only the small lights at the top. Mm -hmm. And the problem usually then is is that if it's when it's functioning as a garage, it doesn't it. All you see is whatever's messy in the garage through them. And if you, it's functioning as a room or a playroom or a gathering space, I'm I'm about to bring 40 of my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren to Abington for a family reunion. I wanted the garage to be able to be thrown the doors, you know, have it kind of as a, a meeting space because my living area is not that large. It won't accommodate certainly my 70 descendants and I'm sure not the 40 that are going to be able to come this year. So I'm just trying to figure out how to make it have that light openness to it. It is paneled on the interior and it is insulated has a drop down ceiling. I haven't even been up in the attic, but it's got a low pitch roof there, so there's not a, I looked up in it, there's maybe three foot up there, but it has an eight foot flat ceiling. There's electrical run in it. It's it's nicely finished for a garage on the interior. You know, has nice concrete floor. Okay. So what we have with the garage we are- Oh, sure. You have to come in here. Um, the last thing, I am Sheila Madison. I live at 118 Valley. Um, she just mentioned the fence just briefly, and that was the first I think we've heard of the fence. So is that part of this proposal as well, this fence in the back? The fence that's bordering Plum Alley? Yeah, right. That fence? Yes. Yes, she paint wanted to paint it white. Okay, well, I didn't know if that was anywhere. I had not heard it mentioned. Well, we had yet. talked about the fencing in the backyard, mm -hmm. and I was assuming that because we have okay. fencing running down between. Okay, me well, and I mean, that's fine. Here. I just wanted, and, and it would just be painted white, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's, okay. that's all I wanted to do to clarify. Uh, all right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Do we have a motion for this one? This is for the garage for um, replacing the two garage doors with the plexiglass panels and putting shutters on the two, s the two windows, one facing south and the other facing north. And the lights. And the, and the light fixtures. And, those, and the those are just the lights that she identified on the plan. She did not, I, the lights that you have on this building were not identified on the mm. plan. So when you come back with another, Proposed, 
So you, on this, had lights that were identified on the garage, and you had a light that was identified in the yard, but there were no lights identified um, on the building, as far as I can tell from what was submitted. They were the same, the same exact lights. I've gotten five of them. I know, I'm just saying it wasn't on the plan, so. Oh. That's because they were already existing, and I was just replacing them. Are you replacing them with the same thing that was there? I'm replacing them with the ones that I'm proposing, the same on the garage and the back of the house. To me, the, the garage, the post light, and the back of the house should all read the same. Okay, so therefore, um, what we had submitted did not include the, did not include the lights. Is that what, you, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's saying the lights on the back were not included in the plan previously, as we discussed. They were here before, so they're existing. So if I can find, so like this light right here that she mentioned, there's one here, one light there. here, and then another one over there. Over there. Are they the craftsman style? I'm sorry. Are they the craftsman style? Or yes, the yes, sir. The one they're illustrated on that picture I gave you. There's five of the same matching wall mounted and one post mounted. The original ones are not a craftsman style. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what yeah, that, that's what colonial. you're asking. Yeah, they're colonial style. Okay, and there's they're being replaced. They're being replaced as well with the with the same one that she's showing you for the garage. Yep. Okay. So it's. Okay. So would uh, Gabe, would you please read the list? There they are. So they are. Yeah, right here, right there. So you're approving the paint scheme. Yep. Um, the mounted shutters or fixed mounted shutters to both windows on the side. Did you say fixed or what did you say? I wanted to clarify. Fixed, fixed. You said fixed. Fixed. Did we want to did we want to change that to operational? That is up to you. Okay. When you when we make the motion, that'll happen. Okay. Okay. The three new light lighting fixtures. So you have. The one here, and the one here on the garage. So two on the garage and one kind of on a pole near the garage. Okay. And then, and then the garage doors. Okay. To be taken out, the wooden uh, doors to be replaced with this kind of plexiglass, frosted glass, okay. eight panels with a metal frame. Okay. Okay. So this is the garage. Yep. Uh, everything that he just read about the garage. Any further discussion? Do we have a motion for this? I'll go ahead and put this in motion. Okay. Mr. Anderson has made a motion. Do you make the motion to approve it as uh, Gabe just read it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second it, but with um, reservations about the shutters, but I'll second it. All right. All right. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. Mrs. Bunn? Aye. Okay. All right. All right. See you next month for landscaping. All right. Yes. You certainly can. So before we move on from the subject, just on the, to put on the record, I understand that the two trolleys are are not part of this application, and I just want to confirm that's because they've been withdrawn, not because there's been a determination that there's not a requirement of a certificate of appropriateness for them. Is that correct? Um, yes, in fact, I was going to, I don't know if it's correct or not, I was going to ask Gabe to update us on the trolley right now as soon as we got finished with everything else. So the trolley has been removed by the applicant to get repaired by the mechanic, and so it would be, it would have to be tagged and operable, and if it's operable, it wouldn't be a structure then. It would be like a food truck. I think that, well, I would just submit to this board, that's a decision for this board to make, not to be made to take away that decision from this board that appears to be what's happening. Say that one more time. So what 
staff has just indicated is that the trolley's been removed to be made operable and then it's going to be brought back, but you're, you won't be considering it because there's been a decision made that it's a vehicle and not a structure, and so you won't be making that decision. Oh, I see what you're saying. And I would submit to you that that's your decision to make. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I think that's something that's going to have to be to have some further discussion, um, not here, but, mm. but, but elsewhere. Okay. All right. So shall we move on to the last item? Yeah, all you have is the uh, waivers. Waivers. Yeah. If you want to flip through just to see, we've included some yeah. extra pictures that I took in the field. To the front. But we just kind of put those in there to notify you of what's been, what has been submitted for waivers. Some we're still waiting uh, payment on to be approved, but some have been paid and approved for. Okay, there, are pictures, there are pictures towards the back. Yeah, the pictures are for each one. So you'll see, for example, 152 East Valley Street, you'll see uh, a site plan of what's to be um, uh, chipped and paved. Mm -hmm. You'll see that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually a very interesting process. I think you should look it up. I think it was very cool. Um, 212 White Smell Road. I just took some pictures of what's there, and they're proposing like for like for everything. So, so I provided right. some pictures for you just to show you what, what it looks like. Okay. Okay. Number three. Is it? Uh, 133 West Valley Street. They're just repainting. So. The same colors? Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it was a big Okay. And you can see, I think I put in there the the um, paint chips that okay. provided everything with a sample of that one. Okay. And then the last waiver we are awaiting, uh, it still needs to, oh, that's re-roofing that was uh, kind of incorporated with, was submitted at the same time as the uh, window one, but he's just replacing shingles with shingles. So it's okay. exact. Okay. So. And then I think this is the last one here on here, and, and Beth said it has returned to speak. He wanted to speak with the public comment period here about something. So you may speak now, Beth said. Slow down a little bit with the rest of the but that's why I could come back completely. Uh, briefly, it's going to be, it's not going to be long. Uh, in the back of the store, have this uh, walk cooler and the unit is my approach. Yes. And this is the unit. And there is another one over here. One for the food cell and one for the cooler. I wanted to put just this. I don't know why you call it cover. Mm -hmm. A cover. And it's made out of this. And if you want this, it's fine with me. I just bought both of them. It's the same mother, <coughs> I believe, except that this is white. That's that, that has the same color as the walking cooler. So I want to put this cover over it, open from here. Mm -hmm. That way the air comes in, and I want to shield it from the rain. And you sh are you shielding the walk-in cooler that you? No, the the, the units, where the, the, where the, the engine, where the oh, okay, where the compressor. All right, for the for your walk-in refrigerator. Yes, for the walk-in. Okay. Yeah, for the walk-in. Okay. And 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 the reason I'm I'm talking about it through that application, in 15 days I'm going home, back home to visit the family, and at the same time we're doing the minor remodeling in the kitchen. <coughs> so it, it is hard for me to do another COA and everything, and it's up to you if you want to tell me something now or you want to do a, a special meeting for me if it's possible. So. I'm asking this is just because it's a special occasion, that's all. Okay. And well, sorry, I'm, you um, know, am I done with the okay. time? But uh, all right. That's my okay. <laughs> I will say that, um, talk to Rick Statzer. <coughs> so that unit is not meant to be outdoors. But oh. he said if he could no, get a it. statement from the manufacturer that, would, that um, it could be covered and make it outdoor, then that's okay, but then obviously it's significantly viewed from the street, so that's where you guys would come in to make a motion on what the screening would be for it. Now, if <coughs> you can't provide that statement from the manufacturer, then it can't be outside. Okay. 
Yes. And, and that's and that's why I wanted to cover it. Right. Because yeah, I spoke to them this morning, the uh, the tech support. He said he said he said the two units you just have to cover them. You have to put some sort of a roof on it to keep the water from uh, uh, mm -hmm. to keep the rain from raining on the on the two units. That's what they said, and then it will be it will be fine. And that's what I'm trying to do now, is to put this cover over here on them, and then it will not be any water uh, uh, even around. Them. <clears throat> and, if, and if I could, and I spoke in. to yeah. Rick also All right. this if I, evening. If I could jump in as well, since we don't have a COA application, there's no design, no material, that can't be done yet. You're just okay. you're just showing them. You're just saying what needs to happen possibly. So don't you can't build anything on that one because you don't have an application in and there's no design for them to review. Well, this is the design. It's not sufficient enough. I mean, we, we now know what you want to do. We have okay. a, for, a forewarning of what you would like to do. Okay. But we can't make a decision on it yet, you know, in this precipitous way right here. Well, you've, got to, you've got to go through the process. Since, yes. I think I hear, heard you say this correctly, since once you do that, it is going to be very visible from the street. It becomes something that we've got to approve. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, it's got to have a formal application. Okay, no, no, I respect that. Okay. It's just when he says it's not a design, this is the same design I'm going to, I'm going to bring when I bring it to him. So I don't see why it's not a design. This is the design. But because you don't have an application. Okay, I understand the yeah. application. If I don't have the application, I understand that. Okay. You're right. But when you say that there is no design, and I just showed them the design. Okay. So this is going to be the design. Okay, but I need to see specs too and everything. We need the statement yeah. from the manufacturer. Yes. So go yes. through go through the whole application process. But no, no, I'm I'm willing to do that. Uh, I'm, uh, yes, I'm willing to do that. But the only issue is, like I said, in 15 days we're going to shut down and mm -hmm. and do what we're going to do. So right. I don't know. It's up to you guys. You hear it from me now. <clears throat> you can make a decision and tell Gabe if there is any possibility either this week or next week from here until the 15th or the 16th. If you can do a special <clears throat> meeting for about 10 minutes, just to talk a lot, talk her over, I really appreciate it. If not, not. Okay, all right, thank you. We'll, we'll consider that, thank you. Thank you, have a good night. Okay. Thank you, thank you, okay. Is it Everybody's leaving. Higher than the <laughs> fence. Yes. So yes. what we originally thought that it was going to be a waiver because it was going to be significantly shielded, it's not really. Especially now. It's not. Especially now. And um, he needed electrical and mechanical permits. Those have not been approved yet. So it really shouldn't even be there at this point. And when uh, inspecting it with Rick Statzer, we saw after doing some more research, it's not meant for out or use. So that's why we need a statement from the manufacturer if that suffices, then it's then they can do it technically. It would be certain it would be weatherproof in a sense. But because it's so that would make it very visible from the street then, Remsburg specifically, it would come under your purview. So that's why you would have to review it then. So he would have to do something like um, creating a some sort of topper to the fence yeah. itself. And you could possibly, you know, the fence would be bigger than what's allowed, but you can make an exception where if you said for Rimsburg Drive, the fence could be increased to a certain height to screen it properly then, mm -hmm. in a sense, to make sure if that's there in a, in a way. But the thing was put there, the walk-in freezer was put there before it was really approved with mechanical electrical permits, and then it's also going to be higher, so it's kind of done before it was really meant mm -hmm. to be there, so you'd just be adding on to the situation in a sense. So it is in your right to say, you know, this reaction is caused by one that, another reaction that should not have happened in a way. So it is something that a lot to think about, and it's kind of up to your decision if you would want to increase the fencing in a way, or you would say, you know, uh, we're not, we would not allow it, so it's totally up to you in some ways. And he, he would need to propose screening to you all. So no. he hasn't said he wants a taller fence. I mean. Yeah, that's just one option. Well, I think, I think also um, 
the main issue here is that he wants us to have a special meeting for it. Yeah, and I, I just, I feel like we're just at a dead end with this right now. He's just going to have to come back at the regular, hmm. at the regular meeting. I believe that is just over all the way. I'm sure third, that puts him in a bind. Yep, I'm sorry, third of May. sorry about that, but I don't think we can have a special meeting mm -hmm. for that. Last year when he went home to Tunisia, it was for several months. So I don't know what he's planning now, but. Based on what he's stated on his website, he will be closed through July, so he is gone for several months again. Okay. Well, that way he won't probably need the freezer. I don't think that's our issue. I'm not yeah. taking up for anything. No, I'm just I know. pointing out not. what's probably the reality. He, he might not. That's true. He probably could submit his items, and you all could discuss it and make a decision without him here if if he chose to. Without him here? I mean, if he wanted to, yeah. if he had everything handed in. You mean without him here before he leaves? No, Are after saying? he's gone. Oh, okay. I mean, it's a risk that he would have to be oh, willing I see. to accept. Okay. But okay. Okay. All right. I think maybe those options should be sent, should be given to him. <clears throat> But, but nevertheless, <clears throat> we're not having a special meeting, mm -hmm. and he must do this with a, a certificate of appropriateness application. Okay. All right. Okay, and, um, Shall we adjourn? Do we have a motion for adjournment? <laughs> we probably have five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll put that in motion. Okay, Mr. Anderson, motions to adjourn. Do we have, we have a second? Second. Mr. Boyd? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Uh, Mrs. White? Aye. And Mrs. Bunn? Aye. Here are these.